So, welcome back to part whatever we're up to in um, how to make cider with an axe. Uh, and this video is about making the pressing boards. Um, now, I had planned a much simpler design um, because I was going to take uh, this wood that I pulled out of a skip um, down to. Well, orig the original plan was to use the Californian redwood that I got the other day, if you haven't seen that video. But then I was told about this skip full of wood, um, this factory down the road, and I went down there and I found all these, um, this hardwood, which is off cuts off some sort of beam or something, and a lot of it, like these ones are thick, ah, but a lot of it is in lathes, like this, which means a lot less work because I don't have to chop up the redwood into thin strips, which is handy. Um, and then I couldn't, no, th then the plan was I was going to take this wood to the men's shed and, and thickness it. Um, but with the boy being in hospital and stuff, I couldn't do that, so I was stuck at home. So I had the crazy idea of doing the whole thing by hand. And um, I've done one pressing board fully, but actually I've done three pressing boards fully by hand, but this is, but only one where it's fully, a fully joined pressing board. And this is going to be the fourth one. Um, so yeah, hope you enjoy my craziness. Um, this takes a long time. A um, lot longer than I would like, but I'm stuck at home. I can't really get down to the, the shed to use the tools. So, the machines, that is. Um, so this is just the way it is. Not really. Fat ends are up this end. That's how it's going to look. Now this is the front of the board, and why that is the front of the board will make sense later, much later, not this video. Oh, okay. So I better explain it. Basically, because of these, um, the way these are shaped, um, um, with the fat end at this end and the thin end at that end, the the, the boards are going to be level, whereas these pieces, when they're on the press, are actually going to be angled. And that means that because it's thin at this end, it's that, that thick at this end, it'll be lower at this end. So as the juice comes out of the press and comes in, falls down at the bottom edge, it, the idea is that it'll run forward out the front of the press. And, the, and these are also going to be shaped, so they slope back that way. So the drips will come in onto the cheese stack and down rather than out splashing over the sides of the tub. So in, I'm going to label these clockwise. There's going to be one, two, three, four. This piece is 55 mil. Can't remember where I bought this little ebony square, but it's really, for this smaller work, it's really a really great size, not too big. 
Okay, now this one is a little bit thinner. Okay, so that's marked out. Now this one. Riding's on the top, and so we're putting the fence on the top. Now you want to cut them. Oh! Stay away from the 
dog will be quiet. going to do is stuff it up. So, I'm going to call it a day, finish it tomorrow. So I'm not sure how good the light is, but um, my dovetails, well, they're still pretty rough, but they're getting better. I've got to improve the placement of the pins and tails to make the tongue and groove work better and also um, trying to avoid knots <laughs> in the ends would be a good step um, look it's it's what can I say it's it's okay it's not good enough though um, certainly not good enough for the prize for the giveaway um, hive so this will be a super that I'll use um, definitely not anything you know what I'm hoping is by the time I've done a whole bunch of these that the prize will be worth competing for um, and that's why the prize the competition's running for a couple of months and hopefully it takes someone that long to guess what that wood is so the clue this video's clue will make it the wood is not from Europe there we go that narrows it down a bit so catch you guys in the next video talk soon <laughs>